Hi, my name is Mark Cruz and I'm an NPS technical rep with Nikon Canada. And today I'm gonna to talk about one of the most important accessories for your Nikon DSLR, and that's an external speed light. When people purchase a DSLR, their first thought for buying an accessory is normally a lens. But if you take photos of people at all, a flash can make the biggest improvement to your photography. The best part is the Nikon speed lights are really easy to use having a full automatic mode called ITTL or intelligent through the lens metering. Meaning the camera and flash work together and figure out the best exposure that'll balance both the subject and the ambient light. Now, let's take a quick step back for a minute and figure out why did you buy a DSLR in the first place? Most people generally buy a DSLR because they weren't happy with the image quality from their smartphone or compact camera, especially indoors. Everyone has tried to get shots of friends at dinner only to find out that there isn't enough light. So the photo is either completely blurry or your subjects are all covered in shadows. So you turn on the flash, but that doesn't help the situation either because the flash is so close to the lens that there's a much greater chance of getting red eye. And since the direction of light is pointed directly at your subject, you'll also be getting shadows behind their head and maybe even glare on their foreheads. Okay, so you've bought a DSLR to get better photos of people. And you're inside taking a picture of someone and there isn't enough light and so you pop up the built-in flash. Since the built-in flash on a DSLR isn't that much farther away from the lens compared with a compact camera, you still aren't going to get very natural looking photos. Now, there's some outdoor uses for the built-in flash when you wanna add a little bit of fill light on your subject but for indoor shots, it'll most likely have the same glare on the forehead, shadow behind the head look that you were trying to get away from. So, an external flash will help get rid of all this. Take an Icon Speedlight, such as an SP5000, and attach it to your camera's hot shoe, point it right at your subject and take a shot. Are all the problems fixed? Not even close. Why is that? Well, because you haven't changed the direction of light. It's still coming directly at your subject's face. The number one thing to be aware of when starting to learn about flash photography is the direction of light, which is now easy to change since almost all of Nikon's external flashes have an ability to tilt and swivel, letting you bounce the light off of your surroundings and therefore changing the direction and quality of light. Now, if you're inside, the simplest way to get great results from an Nikon speed light is to turn it to ITTL meaning in, in its automatic mode. Tilt the head so it's bouncing straight up and then take a shot. There's no glare in the forehead and you'll never get red eyes. All of this is because you're changing the direction of light so that instead of hitting your subject straight on, the light's coming down from above them. By bouncing off the ceiling, not only does this soften the light, but the direction is similar to what we're used to in our normal everyday lives. So it looks much more natural to us. When you're inside and you have walls and the ceiling around you, you actually have a lot of different options for where you want the light to come from. As you saw before, you can simply bounce off the ceiling to get much more natural looking shots. But you can also bounce off the walls as well, giving you the ability to drastically change the direction of light merely by shooting off one wall or the other. The one thing to notice when bouncing off the ceiling is that your subject will sometimes get shadows on their face or under their necks, thanks to all that light coming straight down. One way around this is to use both the walls and ceiling to your advantage. Point the flash slightly backwards and not only will it bounce off the wall, giving you some fill light to get rid of those shadows, but it'll still hit the ceiling, giving you that natural light we want. You do have to be careful with this technique make sure that your wall isn't too far behind you or else your photo will be too dark since your flash may not have enough power to bounce all that distance from the wall to the ceiling to your subject. If you ever do run into situations where the flash power isn't giving you the exposure you want, but you don't want to venture into changing the flash power manually yet, that's where flash exposure compensation comes in. And just like normal exposure compensation, which lets you easily brighten or darken the overall exposure in one third increments, flash exposure comp lets you quickly tell the camera to increase or decrease the power of the flash, depending on your situation. As you can see here, starting at zero EV gives the flash power that the camera thinks is required. But you can also easily raise the flash power by going to plus one EV 
or lowering it by selecting negative one EV. So don't be scared off by thinking that flash photography is for professionals only. Nikon's ITTL system makes it easy for anybody to get great shots. Merely change the tilt or swivel of the flash head to create natural looking light, all while letting the camera figure out the correct exposure. Join us in our next video to learn how to get even more creative by taking the flash off camera completely and using our fully automatic wireless flash system.